Precious Father, in Jesus' name, thank you. Thank you for the privilege that we share in coming together and enjoying the presence of God. Thank you. I ask that you would strengthen each one today and let each mind be at ease. Oh God, in Jesus' name. What is your holy presence that's so precious to us? Thank you for your Holy Spirit that's been moving upon us from the beginning to the end. But nothing so sweet like your Holy Spirit's presence that says peace to the hearts and minds. Oh God, you've been good to us. Hallelujah. We haven't had, many of us haven't had everything we wanted or needed, but Lord, You've been faithful in all of your ways. So we're reaching out, Lord God, to better appreciate your love and your mercy and the things that you've done to and for us over these years. It's been you that's been by our side. It's not been our neighbor or our friends. It's been you by our side. But that steadfast love, comfort now, of your people oh God as we begin to minister the word let life come again let hope and inspiration come by your divine power and Lord we're going to give you the glory thank you for it's in Jesus name we pray amen praise the Lord we've been talking about healing the sick and uh, we'll be talking about healing the sick more and um, so I pray that during this time he would bring those that have need of a physical healing especially you can bring those that have need of healing emotional but by all means bring those that have, that have a need of a physical healing because the uh, the Lord is doing some wonderful things at this time. I remember we go in, we preached on the children that were angry with their fathers and a lot of things transpired. And some that we can, have no idea. God is, uh, he sends his word to heal us, right? So we thank him for that which he's done. And I'm so glad that we were able to come together and worship God healing this, the sick healing the sick I'm going to read last week's word and then we're going to uh, read some others as we get to them but Psalms 103 if you have your Bibles you can follow along with us again and stand with us I'll let this be a basis for our message. So I need the glasses, I'm sorry. <laughs> we are grateful. It's good to see the um, different um, T-shirts. Ushers, praise team, thank you. Amen. We need to get some for the body. Yes. I'll raise my eyes at Toyika. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get that for the body for those that don't have them can have one too so that we all can. See who? Sister Pam. Sister Pam is here today. How many miss Pam? Come on, let's give God some praise. Wow. Give the Lord a big hand clap of praise for her. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. We missed you. Missed you a lot. You know, when those that are not here, 
we miss them, especially our leaders, because they are, we miss each and everybody. It is good to see Shanice. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I see another young lady. Is this? I don't want to get in trouble. You know how I do that. And end up, my wife or somebody says, now nah, you just kind of didn't do that right. <laughs> so, all right. God bless everybody. All right. We're going to go to Psalm 103. Let's read responsibly again, if we will. Beginning, we're going to read down through 14. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities and who healeth all of thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so how hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembered that we are dust. Dear Lord, we thank you again for the word of God, and we ask, Lord, that this will be just a basis for these weeks of uh, teaching concerning healing of the sick. I ask that during these sessions, Lord, these uh, sermons, that you would bring those, God, that you strategically have in mind to bring healing to their bodies. I thank you that, Lord God, you would encourage each and every one of our hearts concerning our loved ones, if we have others that are sick. Lord, that we will, that faith will be ignited, oh God, and regenerated and restored. God, that we may take you at your word. I thank you. Take control now, have your way, and we'll give you honor and praise in Jesus' name and all of his people saying, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We focused in on um, verses two and three. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. And um, that's, that's the goodness of God. God has really, really been a good God, and he's good to all of us. And, but sometimes it's good to be reminded of his goodness and Primarily healing the sick. The, the, there's a lot of people in the body of Christ and people in general. Some just frequented the doctors, spend so much money in medications, and just feeling like this is just my lot in life. But there is a Savior, the same one that saved us is the same one that will heal us. And God wants to bring hope in this area where people have been sick and suffering pain, whether it's arthritis, or whether it's other sicknesses or diseases. A good reminder is that we may understand that God wants us well. And so just briefly, by way of review, we spoke on last Sunday several things, but uh, just to mention a few, uh, one of the things that was said before we can have a steadfast faith in God, it is very important that we get rid of all uncertainties concerning God's will. It is God's will to heal us. And you know, uncertainties can come. Uh, 
doubts and fears, misconceptions, they all can come through time, circumstances, people, and situations. And so sometimes when we are looking or want to believe God for healing, sometimes it's difficult because of uncertainties. So we talked about that, getting rid of that. Talked about having the right mental attitude or according to Romans 12, a renewed mind. A mind that is in harmony with what God's word teaches is the right attitude. And we, we, we've, we talk, we've talked a lot about attitudes over in, at Living Word because God has said a lot about it over the many years. And you know, when if we've experienced brokenheartedness, then it is very easy to have an attitude that's out of harmony with God's mind and will. And so God in his love seeks to heal our broken hearts and to begin to re-educate us as to what's really true. And that takes time and it takes patience that only God has to give. He's patient with us in teaching us. He's a good teacher and uh, he's not impatient. He doesn't grow weary with us. In that sense, he's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. And in the same way, he is long-suffering to teach us the truths concerning his word because he knows something about truth. He said, if you continue in my word, you'll know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. It is truth, the knowledge of truth, when it's embraced, that will set us free. So we talked about having the right uh, mental attitude Talked about the word being the seed of life. And uh, I don't know about you, but many times I've sought to try and please God and uh, it just ended up in frustration. But God began to make me see that it's not in your strength to be able to be sufficiently good enough. God lives in us in his word. And as we digest, embrace that word, continue to keep it watered before our eyes and our minds according to Proverbs, then the word itself will produce the fruit that we all want. And uh, so that, that makes life much easier as a Christian when I understand that it's not how hard I can push, go after God, it's not uh, how much I can pray or uh, uh, how determined I can be in all those things. It is in the word of God. The word of God. We talked about the power of the word in the, every word of God, in every revelation. Uh, there is uh, just unlimited potential. Many times God speaks to us, but we, because we don't understand who's talking, nor do we understand the revelation power and the magnitude of what is in every revelation, we don't really embrace it like we should. And so we go. Uh, without obtaining the blessedness of what God intended. Every revelation can change things about us, but we have to embrace it and allow it to take place in our lives. Isn't that right? Otherwise, it becomes just a word. You know? But I discovered something. I share with this all the time. God gave a lot of different revelations to me. Some of them I've embraced and some I haven't. Not because I didn't want to, just that I didn't understand who was talking to me. But one revelation I did, and, one, and that is healing and restoration. There's no limit. That's just one little revelation out of the multitude of the things that God gave me. And I'm saying that so that you can understand what is the potential of every revelation that God gives you. If you embrace it, keep it watered, think on it, Keep it and, and, and allow it to, to, to germinate and take root in your lives. It will blossom and take you to places that you've never been able to do otherwise. The power is in the seed. We talked about it. Hallelujah. So if you want to go places in God, want to do great things in God, start if you haven't put in that word in you. 
There's no, there's no limit to who and what uh, uh, God can do. You can, God can use any person and take you places and do things with your life that you, you, you just, you know for a fact that it was humanly impossible. With God, nothing shall be impossible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the word, we talked about the word being the seed. So I pray that your attitude is like mine. We're going to really spend more time in the word of God. Meditating on the word of God. You know, don't get in a hurry trying to do things for God if the word is not sufficiently in you. Because you're no match for Satan. Isn't that right? Jesus himself, when the devil came to tempt him, what did he use? He used the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. He used that word. He didn't get back and fight and carry on like, I got to do this all, but he said, it is written. It sounds simple, but it's truth. It's really a powerful thing. This is our offensive tool, isn't that right? That we can, we, we charge the enemy and we defeat him through the word of God. So we talked about that and the unlimited potential. And um, so as I was going back and looking over it a little bit, I, I, uh, I remember one of the parts, and F.F. And, and F. Bosworth was uh, uh, the gentleman I was reading from his book and took some excerpts from his book and uh, I should have mentioned that uh, since I was quoting some things from him on last week but um, but I'm mentioning it today uh, he wrote a book Christ Our, the, Our Healer and uh, there are so many things and he was sharing about multiplied thousands upon thousands of people were healed just reading the book but the work was just pointing to the word Word was the, the, the uh, so uh, I took some excerpts from his book on last week, uh, but one of the things that he mentioned in, in the book was uh, before we can have a steadfast faith for healing, we have to get rid of all the uncertainties. Now I want you to pause with me right now and think. If you have a condition in your body, what are some of the uncertainties that you? have been dealing with. Do you know beyond a doubt that it is God's will for you to be whole? Do you embrace that? Simple, but just a thought. As I was thinking about that, the, that, the uncertainties, one of the biggest is lack of trust in God don't realize that it's God talking, right? And it, it, the problem with that is God's not man. And nor is he like man. He doesn't have the tendency to fail. He doesn't have the tendency to say something and can't perform his word. And nor is he shady to say something and don't really mean what he said. He's truth. And because he's truth, he can't be a lie. He doesn't have to work at being truthful. He is truth. Isn't that right? He is truth. Hallelujah. I, I, I remember that thing hit me some years ago. I was reading the word and in the word, um, it just came to me as I was reading a certain scripture. That God can't lie. Man, I got so excited. I didn't know what to do. God can't lie. He doesn't have to try not to lie. See, when we look at God from a human perspective, we look at him like, man, you know, I have to work at keeping my word, right? And you do too, but not God. Whatever he says is truth. And so I have to try to make sure I'm telling the truth, gain enough knowledge or whatever. But God is truth. And it's impossible 
for him to lie. So you can take his word to the bank. So getting rid of all uncertainties. One is, uh, he mentioned lack of trust in God. God is a God of integrity. I can trust what he's saying. Well, what brings about that? Well, you, and there's a lot of things that may bring that about. Sometimes we have untrustworthy, uh, significant others. They can't keep their word. They don't keep their word. So it forms a pattern in our lives. And particularly when fathers can't keep their word or don't keep their word, we come to God, we're trying to trust God and those images of a person that says something and can't keep that word, we fight. And so it causes problems with us trying to believe that, no, this is not a man that's spoken to you. This is God. And since we've had no experience or to that degree that God keeps his word, then the thing that we have to draw on is these images. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And those images are faulty at best, right? So the Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind. When you renew the mind, you also change images. Somebody say images. Well, if I want to change the images in, on the screens of my mind, then I must begin to look at truth, which is the word of God. A lack of trust in God. Then some other, another thing is uh, mental thoughts. God is not pleased with my life. Thoughts like that when we may be trying to believe healing for healing. We, and thoughts like God is punishing me because I'm not uh, measuring up or, or I have to earn it. I have to prove that uh, uh, God, you know, that, I'm, that, that I love God. And uh, uh, all, of these, all of these kind of things that comes to our mind may stand in our way. Well, I don't have uh, this God, so I know God loves me, but uh, he's, he's, he's dealing with me. He's teaching me. Through the suffering. Well, God's got ways to deal with us, right? But he went to Calvary so that we can be healed, right? And so he didn't need to do that to uh, 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 teach us through that. So a steadfast faith is important. Because God doesn't work in our time, on our timetable, right? So a steadfast faith is important because if God doesn't manifest what he's doing within the next week or two, then we must understand that uh, our faith is still intact and we still believe God like we did the day we heard the word of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'll say it fast, faith. So we talked about that and uh, getting rid of all these uncertainties. And so today, briefly, God said to speak briefly about the integrity of God. God is just. God is upright. God is holy. God is morally upright. He is honest. Right? That's who God is. He's fair. He's straight. So, the word just here means upright, straight. The word integrity deals with the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. So, I say integrity. All right, since God is just, let's look at the scripture here. Turn to with me to Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. You there, say amen. I want you to look at verses 21 and 22. 21 says, 
Okay, let me just read 20 also. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of the graven image and pray to a God that cannot save. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I, the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look to me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. But notice he said, a just God. A just God, an upright God, a God that is straight. He says exactly what he means, and means exactly what he says. Because he fears no man, right? Now, another scripture here we want to deal with is Zechariah. Chapter 9. Zechariah 9, the Bible says. Verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon the, a coat, the fold of an ass. Again, he's saying the king is just. He's righteous. He's upright. So God has integrity. He says to, and these are all uh, preliminaries. These are all leading up to our learning to know and to believe what God says about healing the sick. It's important to know that it's the word of God that we trust. All the promises are in his word, right? And so we move on from there to understanding that God's word is God and God is the God of integrity. He doesn't have favorites. You know, no one can accuse God of having favorites. He's fair. He's straight. He's not partial. He's not prejudiced. I remember asking the Lord, I said, God, are you prejudiced? I looked at the earth. I looked at a certain race of people. And I asked God, are you prejudiced? And he said, what did my word say? <laughs> Peter had to perceive he said, I perceive, look at what I say, perception. perception. That God is no respect of persons. But in all nations, everyone that worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is the God of integrity. He's just. All right. He's upright. Now let's look a little bit more concerning his integrity. Integrity is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. Bible in Numbers 23, 19 says, who knows what that means? It says, Bible readers, you can tell me what that means before you look at it. All right, nobody responded. Okay. Numbers 23. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said? And shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken? And shall he not make it good? God has integrity, right? He's a God of integrity. 
First Samuel 15, 29 says, and the strength of Israel will not lie. He's not a man that he has to repent because he said, oh, I tried to, but I couldn't do it. The God is a God of integrity. He's honest and fair. He can do what he says he can do. And God can be trusted. When he promises something, he can back it up. And I know if you're like me, you're thinking about some of the things God promised you, right? You think about the things God promised you, well, the Lord has been a long time, you know, I, I felt the goosebumps, I felt everything when I heard the word of prophecy come in and so on, and yet the years have passed by and nothing has happened and so on, so Lord, but what does that mean? He's still God. He still meant what he said. Isn't that right? He sent the uh, anointing so that you could know the thing didn't come from man. Isn't that right? And that was to be enough to know that if you sense that power and that anointing when God released that word, that means God saying so that you understand it wasn't the word that came from man, it came from me so that you can hold on to it no matter what it looks like and how long it takes. Isn't that right? All right. So he said, uh, now, let me let, let me show you something. Turn to Joshua twenty one. You got to follow with me now, so we, and so at the end we can rejoice together. We can, we we don't want to we don't want to be like the ones that dance and shout it, and then we get home and depressed. You know, we 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 we, we want to be a different people because we've got substance, truth in the inward parts. Isn't that right? That's what God wants, so that we can stand against the forces that come our way to tell us lies and to. Try to discourage our lives. Joshua 21. Remember when, what God, when God promised Israel what he was, the things that he would do, give them land and, the, and this kind of thing. And, and yes, there was a generation, a whole generation that got wiped out and so on. Somebody probably said, uh-huh, I knew it. It wasn't going to happen, you know. Uh, chapter 21, look at verse 43. And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he swore to give to their fathers. And they possessed it and dwelt therein. And the Lord gave them rest round about according to all that he swore to their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. There failed not, somebody got to see this now. There failed not aught or anything of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. Are you with me? Now let's pause and give him thanks for the integrity that he has. Hallelujah. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. So if we're going to serve him, then we've got to have this understanding. God is faithful. We fail time and time again, right? But not God. God doesn't fail. So God is faithful. He's, he's, when he promises something, he will bring it to pass. All right, now I want to do one more scripture, and then after this year, we, we're almost done. Isaiah 50. Isaiah 55. Are you there? Say amen. amen. Look at verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Everybody see that? Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. Look at someone who says, why herein is the problem. Y'all see that? 
He said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Oh. So he, he really began to drive that home now. So since God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts, not our thoughts, you thought you had God all figured out. That's almost an oxymoron. You figured out God. But you didn't understand him. He didn't fit into your intellectual box. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? So the Lord said, your thoughts are not my thoughts. You, 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 you've been figuring and you, you just knew you knew God. <laughs> Somebody better draw toes in because I'm, I'm, I'm. He was dealing with me. You thought you knew God. You thought you had him all figured out, you know. I'll pray, I'll do this here, and God will do this. It's like the Lord said, oh yeah. What if you pray, and I don't do it yet? What if you fast, and I decide I'm not going to do it until I get ready? Somebody, you know I'm talking to you, you know. So the Lord really was just, and I, I said, oh wow. You thought you had him figured out. You know what I, look, have you, anybody, well, that's what the word says. Yeah, it did. But listen to what he says. He said, your thoughts are not my thoughts and your ways. You know what? I am so glad he didn't listen to me. Because if God had answered the little prayer that I was praying, I can see right now I would have been so messed up. But he didn't. He worked according to his will and plan for my life. And I'm so glad, hallelujah, that he did. Because God saw something that I didn't see about my pathway. God saw people that I didn't see. God saw things that I didn't see. I didn't have the capacity to see them because I can't look five and 10 years or 20 years down the road. So I needed to leave it into the hands of the almighty God instead of trying to figure it out or instead of trying to get God to do what I want him to do. I needed to let him be God. Hallelujah. And if you're going to enjoy your Christian experience, you need to let God be God. Isn't that right? He's got our best interests at heart. If you trust him, If you trust him. I heard David said, delight yourself also in him and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Look, 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 look. He, he, he's not asking a whole lot, but he, but he did say if you just delight yourself in him. How many are doing just that? Anybody? How many are doing just that? You just, you having a ball. You, you enjoying God. You ain't worried about what's going on. Anybody? Oh. Hmm. He said, trust in him. Delight in him. 
and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Isn't that right? Lift your hands and begin to praise God, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. His ways are not our ways. While I heard one man told me this one time when I was really trying to figure things out. He said, while you trying to figure it out, God's already worked it out. And he said, the thing for you to do is just trust. Come on, somebody, give, give God some praise in this house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, what about this? Somebody, you thought he was upset with you or displeased with you. So it made you feel bad. You couldn't worship him. You couldn't, you, 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 you spent a lot of time feeling guilty. You thought God just was upset with you. He wasn't pleased with your life. That's not what God teaches. Isn't that right? He said, I know my thoughts toward you. Good thoughts. Hallelujah. Glory. So trust is like the, one of the only ways to build a relationship with God. Isn't that right? Trust him. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Because he that comes to God must believe that what? And that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Isn't that right? He'll reward you if you seek him. Isn't that right? And then Israel, he brought to me in my mind, Israel didn't trust God during their time of testing. The elders and the leaders there with Moses, they didn't trust God. They didn't trust how God was leading him. They were looking with their own wisdom and they didn't understand. And so they complained and murmured because they didn't understand God's ways. And Israel, the story is, 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 is mentioned and told that the, the journey through the wilderness was no more than a 11 days journey. And so when God began to lead them, they couldn't understand why he was leading but the truth was about it was they had just come out of bondage. They had no fighting skills. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So if he had led them the way of some of these people there, they'd have been destroyed. So God led them another way. How many, how many understand God's wisdom? You see, you, you, you understand that when God leads you a certain way you must trust him and not try oh. my ways are not your ways now God had an expected end for Israel this short journey was to be short but in that process God was going to teach them of his ways just some of his ways. But they didn't learn, but Moses did. They saw his acts. But Moses learned of his ways. So sometimes God is leading in us to teach us just some things about his ways. And his ways of past finding out. You, you see, he takes you through and then you turn around and say, how did I get? God did that. So one of the, the things about his ways is you can't figure it out. You have to learn to trust. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Mm. You will do yourself some grave injustice if you don't learn to trust God. Songwriter said, trust and obey. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus. 
and to trust and obey. God said, praise him by golly, give him glory. Praise him, isn't that right? Because somebody said, don't sit down and have a pity party. Begin to praise God. God's got ways. Don't do like Naaman and the Syrian. Don't fuss at him when he gives you some guidance. Man, you come, y'all, y'all got to hear what I'm saying. Naaman, now here he was, he was a great person, but, 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 but he didn't understand God's ways. God said, go down to the buddy Jordan there and dip. And he fussed all the way. Oh, before he went, he fussed. He fussed, he fussed, he fussed because the man of God didn't come out there and wave his hand down from top to bottom. He fussed, he kept fussing. And then his little servant said, my Lord, he was humble with it, my Lord. You know, if he had given you a hard task, wouldn't you have done it? Yeah. But my Lord, he, all he did was say, go down to the Jordan. And did seven times. Yeah. Well, he got a point there. <laughs> he went on down to the Jordan. And he dipped seven times. And he came back having church. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Trust in the Lord. Ah, oh, my God. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord. You got to trust in the integrity of his word. God is his word. We're going to have a steadfast faith in God. We not only have to get that word in us, but we got to learn to trust in the integrity of whose that word comes from. That word comes from God. And we'll get into the atonement by the grace of God. Hopefully next we begin to go back and let you visit the atonement. What took place during the atonement? But before we get into all that, I wanted you to know that the Lord said he's a God of integrity. And whatever he promises, you can bank on it. Time doesn't change his mind. Circumstances don't change his mind. God is able. God looks from the beginning to the end. And when he promises you something, He's not speeding, speaking lighthearted. God sees and he knows. And if it ain't right, he can make it right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. You can trust him. Trust him in him. David said, trust in him at all times. Oh, you're his people. Glory to God. So God says, I want you to know that he's a God of integrity. Hallelujah. Now let me read the rest of Isaiah 55. Verse 9, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Lord, have mercy. And my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and return not thither, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth in bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish, somebody say accomplish, that which I please, hallelujah. And it shall prosper, somebody say prosper, in the thing whereto I send it. Come on, let's put our hands together and give God praise. Hallelujah. Everything that he promised, it'll come to pass. If we believe what he said, begin to be happy in the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't spend your time worrying anymore. Isn't that right? Just begin to trust in the Lord and just have a, have, have a happy time, a time to bless the Lord. For, for the Lord loves a person that is happy and trusts in his word. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Isn't that right? He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder. Of them that diligently seek him. Uh, David, uh, Paul said rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Uh, David, the psalmist said, serve the Lord 
with gladness come before his presence with singing hallelujah know ye that he is God he made us and not we ourselves enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name because the Lord is good somebody lift your hands and praise the Lord and hallelujah glory be to God hallelujah give him his due somebody give him his due glory to God hallelujah thank you God hallelujah you're a covenant keeping God. You'll do what you say. He went all the way to Calvary. Was he serious? He went all the way to Calvary. So I can't accuse him of not being serious. He went all the way to the cross. And took my place. He's serious. But he's trying to. Inculcate into our being a system of established principles God is who we say he is he will not deny his own word so David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. He's a God of integrity. You and I are serving someone that is trustworthy. He's reliable. You can take what he says to the bank. That's the way he is. And we make him happy when we, as little children, have you ever seen a, a mother and a daughter or a father and a son? The son is little. And he is just, he's got his father's hand and he's just skipping or she's just skipping. She has her mother's hand. She's little. She's not worried about a thing because she, her mother is walking right beside her or his father is walking right along with it. His father is bigger than he. Her mother is bigger than she. Her mother has things better under control. So she doesn't have to really try to figure out as long as she's walking and her mother is right there by her side. God calls us little children. Isn't that right? We are to walk with him and enjoy life knowing that God is with us. And if we have to fight our enemies, God will fight our enemies. He will fight our battles. As we learn to trust him. He's a God of integrity. God's going to heal some people before these series are over. So bring your relatives. We're going to begin to talk about the atonement and what happened. The sacrifice. I know you've heard it, but you need to hear it again. Isn't that right? Somebody needs Jesus. Somebody needs the hand of God flowing like never before. And, and, and while I was going through that and God began to share with me how, how God, God is a God of integrity and a God that you can trust. And he took me to Numbers 23 about God can't lie. And then I felt the Holy Ghost just come on me and just God. And then he said, I'm, I'm going to, it's like he said, I'm going to wash away all this unbelief. I'm going to wash away all these doubts and fears and, and all of this stuff that's been standing in your way and I believe that somebody here today God want to just wipe all that unbelief and that fear and all that stuff that's standing in your way today come on let's begin to give God some glory in this house hallelujah glory to God hallelujah Jesus glory to God hallelujah hallelujah glory to God would you stand with me today praise the Lord God is good God is good. Hallelujah. Just wipe away the fear. Wipe away the unbelief. Wipe away the doubts. Uh, and all of this stuff that happened, you know, that keeps getting in our way of simple childlike faith. Are you with me today? God is God. He's the mother hen. He's the father. He's the one that is with us and will not leave us nor forsake us. 
He's a God of integrity, so I can put my trust in him. I can trust in him. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you right now. I give you praise and I give you glory. Honor you because you've been good to us, son. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for the sick, Lord, that you're going to begin to heal. Thank you, Lord God, because you said it. I believe it. It settles it, Lord Jesus. You're going to begin to heal sicknesses and diseases, oh God, not only by the airways, but God, you're going to heal them right in the midst of us. You are our Savior. Hallelujah. You forgive all of our iniquities and you heal all of our diseases. And, and we're going to praise you in advance and thank you, God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. God will do what he said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. Uh, lift the spirits now of your people. Lift the spirits uh, of your people. Uh, let us now begin to take you at your word. Uh, we praise you and we thank you. Glory to God. Now, before we go any further... I want you to be prompted by the Holy Spirit. Don't worry about somebody thinking that you're more spiritual. Don't, don't worry about none of that. But I want you to prepare your heart to come just down to the altar and let the Lord just sweep and wipe away all the fears and the doubts, the unbelief and all the unsettledness in your soul. He's a covenant keeping God. Oh, Father, I thank you right now. I give your name to glory. I give your name to honor. You've been so good. You've been so faithful in all of your ways. I thank you. I honor you. I magnify you. I give glory to your great name. Have your way now. In the name of Jesus Christ. We praise you, Father. We bless you. Well, you've been good. You've been glorious in kindness. Saints, if you don't remember much that I say today, remember this. Let's begin to be happy in God. Not because of circumstances, but because he's worthy of his praise. Thank you, Master. Master. 